Anyone who looked at Little Joe Theismann growing up in South River didn't see a professional football player. I mean, I graduated from high school, I was 152 pounds. Who was gonna look at me? Yeah, well, he wasn't that big, you know? But see, what was big was his heart and his ego, all right? You could not keep Joey down. I wound up having a really good senior year and, and we were undefeated. Our high school coach ended up getting an assistant coaching job at North Carolina State. Joey's about to go there. Then all of a sudden, Notre Dame calls. When Notre Dame called, it was all over, all right? If Notre Dame wants you, you gotta go. I remember going out to the university and then flying back and getting off the plane in Newark, New Jersey. My dad picked me up, he says, what do you think? I said, I have to go to Notre Dame. He says, why? I said, Dad, I can only tell you this, it feels right. The spirit of Notre Dame is, I think, if it could be bottled, could probably light up the universe. So my freshman year, Johnny Ray is the linebacker coach, Joe Yanto is the defensive line coach. And Johnny says to Joe, where's this hot shot quarterback you got? He says, that's him over there. He says, oh my God, he doesn't look big enough to carry a water bucket. Are you kidding me, Joe? In 1968, Theismann and Coley O'Brien were backups to starting quarterback Terry Hanratty. When Joe got the chance he had been waiting for. Irish fans are apprehensive because of the loss of Terry Hanratty, who will be out for the rest of the year. Coach Eric Parsigian is forced to hand the Irish offense over to sophomore quarterback Joe Theismann. Eric could have gone to Coley. Coley had the experience. Coley won a national championship. He goes to me, he said, you're in. That's a very defining moment in a young athlete's life. You can go one of two ways. You can act like you belong, or you can act like it's too darn big. I just stepped in the huddle and I said, hey, let's go get it done. Young Joe Thiesman starting at quarterback. Six feet tall, 170 pounds, from South River, New Jersey. And what pressure is on this young man? Theismann took over and never looked back, setting Notre Dame career records for touchdowns and passing yards. The play is the quarterback gives the impression he wants to become a veteran in one game. In his senior year, the Irish quarterback led Notre Dame to a Cotton Bowl victory. He's a willowy boy, six feet, 170 pounds, but remarkably quick feet and excellent balance. The South River Roadrunner, one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time. At the beginning of my senior year, Roger Valdeseri, our public relations director, calls me in the office. He said, Joe, how do you uh, pronounce your last name? I said, it's Thiesman. He said, no, no, your last name is pronounced Thiesman. I said, no, 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 my last name is pronounced Thiesman. He said, no, Joe, your last name is pronounced Thiesman. He said, Joe, I want to tell you something. There's a trophy out there called the Heisman Trophy. Because the best college football player in the country. We think you have a chance to win that trophy. But we're not just going to count on your athletic ability nor the reputation of the University of Notre Dame. But we think by just simply changing the pronunciation of your last name from Thiesman to Thiesman to rhyme with Thiesman, we can get you that trophy. And that's how my name was changed. And that's how I became Joe Thiesman. It was really the first time, I believe, that any university had put together a public relations campaign to have somebody win the trophy. There were Theisman for Heisman buttons and Theisman for a Heisman bumper stickers. I mean, they had all kinds of stuff. I didn't win the Heisman trophy. Jim Plunkett won it, deservedly so. The 36th winner of the Heisman Memorial Trophy. Congratulations and good luck. Thank you very much. I've had a call from Joe Theisman. He's waiting to hear from you and I have the number and I hope that you'll find time to call him back. He's waiting to hear from you. To congratulate you too. He finished second to Jim Plunkett, but Thiesman or Theismann, it didn't matter. Professional sports teams were all interested in Joe. I wound up being drafted by Miami in the fourth round. I was drafted by the Toronto Argonauts up in the Canadian Football League. Theismann began negotiating with head coach Don Shula's Miami Dolphins. I didn't have an agent. So I fly down to Miami, walked into Mr. Robbie's office, sat down, and he said, uh, what do you want? And I said, I want thirty-five, forty-five, and fifty-five thousand dollars, and I want a thirty-five thousand dollars signing bonus. He said, "You got it." Shula thinks I'm signed, sealed, and delivered, and uh, they sent me my contract. And they put a clause in the bonus that said, if I didn't show up for any of those years, the bonus would be, have to be repaid. And now, keep in mind, in 1971, we were at the end of the Vietnam War, so I didn't know what was going to happen. So I said, "No, no, no, this isn't right." So Theismann signed a contract with the Toronto Argonauts. 
Don flew up to South Bend and read me the riot act. He had a moral obligation to be in Miami Dolphins. I said, well, you had a moral obligation not to screw with my contract. They had actually changed it to the way I wanted it, but I became so disillusioned with the process that I said, to heck with it. And so I wound up being a Toronto Argonaut. A lot of people call me cocky. I don't mind. I think there's a very, very uh, fine line between cockiness and self-confidence. And I hope to elude self-confidence because I don't think there's anybody better than I am. Theismann fit right in in Canada, becoming a fan favorite and media darling. You're going to move, try and go straight up and look to over your left outside shoulder, right? Theismann stayed in Toronto for three years and led the Argonauts to their first Grey Cup appearance since 1952. The Dolphins, they won two Super Bowls. You know, it's like I look at the years the Dolphins won Super Bowls, the undefeated season in 72. Shaken up on the play is Greasy. Yeah, it looks like his right ankle, Rick. Uh, it may be right here. He may have to go out of the ball game. In the middle of their quest for perfection in 1972, quarterback Bob Greasy was sidelined. The Dolphins turned to back up Earl Morrill who led Miami to victory in their nine remaining regular season games. They had to go get Earl Morrill because I didn't go. How do you feel now? Bob Greasy's hurt. You would have had an opportunity to be the quarterback of the Miami Dolphins. The Dolphins have completed the greatest season in NFL history. Had I not gone to Toronto, the Miami Dolphins would have never signed Earl Morrill, which theoretically could have been me. So from my perspective, to all the Dolphin fans about those early years in the 70s that they went to Super Bowls, I accept your thank you.